So Fernando's comment is, Mike, just a quick question. Question: Why is implied volatility lowest on at the money and at the moneyness? It's not. It depends on the stock. Okay. And it depends on the month you're looking at. What is Fernando talking about? Let's just look at Apple again. I'm going to go to the chain and let's, I'm going to go out maybe further than April. No, we'll go to April. And you see here, that's not the case for Apple. The at the money option, the 121 25 strike. Here's our chain. All right, Fernando. This is the April section, the April expiration, April 16th. 42 days away. This is my implied, this is for the calls. This is my implied volatility. In the money options, you said at the money moneyness, but in the money options here have the highest implied volatility, and then it's lower further out in time. And I, I, you had mentioned at the money. Well, the at the money here is okay, but the lowest in this case is out of the money. And you'll see that from time to time, okay? What you'll also see, if you're asking me why are these in the money ones um, sitting there with the highest implied volatility in that case, part of the reason why is they also have the lowest activity. That does, in a sense, come into account from time to time with the implied volatility. There's also another factor involved as well. There we go. Okay, so you see here the deeper in the money ones have the higher implied volatility at the money is is normal and then it starts to skew out not every stock as i mentioned is like this i go to dar that we looked at a little while ago okay here it's very similar but here with the lowest activity uh, not a lot of recent previous but some current option volume lowest open interest you see that you get these spikes and we went to that deep in the money call on apple we were looking at those 95s uh, for the leap july for example Oh, sorry. Go into June, July. Uh, I'm sorry, was it July 469 or is it June? June. I apologize. The June series there. Relatively same thing. But here it stays normal and it still declines a little bit. Okay. But not every stock is like that. Sometimes you'll see the at the money is the lowest and it skews upwards as it goes out of the money and it goes in the money. But main of the reason why is lower activity down here, which causes typically a wider bid ask spread. Because you know, when you're doing the implied volatility, you're calculating why is the option not priced as its theoretical worth based on the historical volatility, working the equation backwards. This is, this is what gives us the implied volatility. In other words, I take the Black Scholes pricing model with the five factors of stock price, strike price, days to expiration, uh, current interest rates on the market. And the stock volatility and we plug in those five factors and it gives us the theoretical price of the option x now what's the only thing that's that can really change on that it's the volatility why is the theoretical price not equal to the current price well you work it backwards and that gives you you take out volatility put in the price over here the actual trading price, put in our actual trading price here, work the equation backwards, and that gives you the IV. But these aren't that wide, but when you get wider bid-ask spreads, in that case, we're saying that, well, the theoretical value here, 34.89, but the actual market wants 37.03 at midpoint and giving 36.85. Just between the bid and the Black Scholes value based on the historical stock volatility, Fernando, you're two dollars off. That gives you a higher implied volatility. It can be a little bit attributed to that wider bid ask spread because of what the market is doing. And why do you sometimes have a wider bid ask spread as well? Less activity on a regular basis. Whereas up here, oh, it's about the same, isn't it? <laughs> the at the money, $17 roughly here. So it's about a dollar seventy-five off. And we're still at 0.35. It's not great. I mean, it's only 0.03 off between these two, a little bit less actually. But that's why you start to see the subtle increase. This is about $2 off. This is about, what, $1.75 off. It's not too different. But 
enough to change it when you work the equation backwards to what is the option actually trading at, and it's using midpoint based on its theoretical worth here. You see subtle differences, but these are all pretty much the same. You see, on DAR, I saw a wide one, didn't we? I saw that one that was at 100. Uh, I can't remember what expiration, if I was looking at March or August. There it is, the 1,000 delta, excuse me. Or the 100, that's delta, I'm sorry, the implied volatility here. Um, this is so wide because you can see here that the this is about 60, 70 cents off of its midpoint. The black Scholes value, 888 to the actual trading price of the option, 895 at midpoint. It's not too far off. Here it's a full dollar 40. So it's saying the implied volatility has to be 1.1 because this is a dollar 40 off. Everything else is 10 cents, 7, 8 cents, 12 cents. This is why I wanted to use this example. 33 versus 24, it's only 9 cents off. Okay. And then so here, oh, there's a perfect example, Fernando. This one here, all over the map of <laughs> the September series. Highest implied volatility is the deepest in the money and the two deepest out of the money. And right at the money is the lowest, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay. 10 cent different to theoretical value to the trading price of the option. Wide bid ask spread gives us a dollar 40 as opposed to 10 cents. Unrealistic data that probably came through at the end of market from the exchanges, to be honest with you, a zero bid on our 90 strike call for March 19th, excuse me, with a five dollar. So it showed me a 250 theoretical value, or I'm sorry, 250 midpoint, Fernando. I apologize, but the theoretical value is six cents. This isn't realistic. I put in a bid to get it at 250. I try to sell this call as a covered call at 250 to get the midpoint. The broker is going to change this immediately. The bid's going to go to zero and the ask is going to go to 250. And I put another order in at 125, which is the new midpoint. Bid stays at zero, ask goes to 125. I put it in at 60, bid stays at zero, ask goes to 60. I put it in at 30. I'm just following him down. He's going to put the ask at 30. I put this at 15. He's going to put the ask at 15. I put the bid at seven. He says, maybe I'll give you seven. Okay, we followed you down far enough. Maybe I'll give you seven. But that's what you see when you have, in this case, I think it's just, a, a, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about this um, except to show the last price, which we show on some of the searches that you can look at too in this case. But this just came across the exchange. They had a zero bid, which is logical, the way it's detailing. And the 95 is a zero bid as well. But somehow there's an ask out there sitting at five dollars from there's no volume today, which means this was some price that was put out there, some offer that was never filled in that case. And that's what happened. And so, as you mentioned, we looked at this a week ago. OK, uh, we looked at this a week ago. And we saw some effects of that on the volatility skew tool. And we saw some sudden, you, you know, you saw the typical smile you wanted. And then you see the sudden spike down and it comes sort of back up like this. These are the reasons why outliers that make no sense because the bid ask spread is too wide and you've, you're way off from the black shells value which means your implied volatility is going to be extraordinarily high and you get something that's not direct so let's take a look at it while we're here volatility skew dar march options um and dar i don't want the time skew i want the strike skew and uh yeah all strikes. I'm sorry. Yeah. All strikes. <laughs> there you go. Uh, where's my 90 on the calls? The red is, oh shoot. I scrolled down too far guys. I'm sorry. Here we go. Call is the red and you see what sort of happens. The 90 just sort of spikes. Everything's up here at 0 0.5, 0 0.55 and then oh, 1.14. And then it's, the next option up was still at about 0 0.89. And here, there's your 40 and 55 strike that had the 1.1 and then it just slopes down and everything else is in this range. The puts are normal. Yeah, deep out of the money, the 45, 35, 55, and then we get to here, but then there's that other jump and then it comes back up. Okay. So uh, you said, uh, I'm sorry, was this Fernando that made this comment? Yeah. Fernando says, thanks. Now I've understood that this is the bid ask spread deep ITM and OTM. 
uh, Price's classic smile that shows on the SKU. Yeah, so you expect to see it, but when DAR, you can see how on the calls, we're not seeing exactly what we'd expect from March. You kind of would expect it to continue to do sort of this, maybe even tail off like this, but that outlier there puts us back up into this range, really has a huge spike in that case. And that's what we're looking at with those examples. Meanwhile, um, what series were we looking at for sep, uh, for Apple? Was it September? Oh, no, it was the June. That was that deep June we were looking at for uh, kind of the discussion we were talking about earlier with Butch. We saw those deep in the money ones at, you know, 0.5, 0.58, point, um, I'm sorry, 0 0.38, 0 0.58 at the 100 strike, uh, 0.37. And then the strikes we looked at to about 140 or 150 stayed in that range for both the calls and for the puts as well. Okay. All right. So that's what we're kind of expecting there. Because remember what we were talking about before. Uh, oh, I'm backwards here. There we go. Okay. What we were talking about just a moment ago. And, you know, just to illustrate it again. Here we go. Okay. The Black Shoals value, the theoretical price of where our option should be trading is derived by taking the current stock price, the strike price of our option. Why is that important? Because it determines if it's ITM or OTM, right? So at the, the 55 strike on the $73 stock, we're essentially $18 in the money. And the 80 strike, we're essentially $7 out of the money, $650, right? So the stock price, strike price, days to expiration, so we can establish a good time value, a correct time value, that uh, interest rate or current free interest rate on the market, and then the underlying stock volatility, usually the 50-day volatility or the 250-day the volatility. These five factors are plugged into an equation that says, hey, based on all of these numbers, your option, Mike, your 55 March call on DAR should be priced at 1853. It's not. It's priced at 1910. All right, it's only 16, uh, 60 cents. I'm sorry, but if it uses the ask, it's at 2070. Okay, so there there is a difference there. Okay, why why again is this such a big deal? What is the only thing that can change in this equation to give a number that isn't correct? It's not the stock price. It's not the strike price. The days to expiration is set. The free interest rate set. It's the volatility. What's the number that justifies why this is not trading? at its expected price if it's higher or lower that's what we call implied volatility naturally so we take the stock volatility out of the equation we put in the actual trading price of the option in or another way to look at it is you this was originally x we solved for x which was the theoretical value now we're replacing x with the actual trading price and let me solve for the number that changes that can be missing we sort of work the equation backwards now and solve for volatility and we get this value of 1.10 which would give us the price of the original five if we put 1.10 in there the 55 call would come out with an actual trading price of 1910 or the, or the 2070. that's how the theoretical value goes that's how the to drive applied volatility in a sense and that's why sometimes you see extremes is because this example is the best one higher than anything 1.3 because this isn't realistic you're never going to get 250 for this option there is no way that that out of the money 90 strike for 14 days you're going to get 250 for it but if it realistically was priced at 250 based on what the exchanges are listing applied volatility is 1.3 that's how it goes all right <laughs> yeah you solve the equation by reverse engineering i know that's kind of one way to put it as well all right, so that's just a review there, additional review of the implied volatility, implied volatility of the moneyness of the option, why it changed, why you sometimes see those extreme outliers in those scenarios. Uh, and education on the Black Shoals pricing model for anyone who wants it a little bit later, finally walk through the review on that as well. And that is going to take us uh, right to, of course, our ending there. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. If you think of any other questions later on, always remember, send me an email to support at powerop.com or support at radioactivetrading.com. Of course, you can also call us during market hours at 302-992-7971.
and trial members, as we talked about earlier, or subscribers to Power Options can always schedule a free coaching session at any time.